Mindscape podcast. I love it. Uh, you interview a huge variety of experts from all kinds of fields. So just several questions I wanna ask. How do you prepare? Uh, like, how do you prepare to have a good conversation? How do you prepare in a way that satisfies, makes your own curious mind happy? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, these are great questions. And I've sort of struggled and, and changed my techniques over the years. It's over five-year-old podcast. It might be approaching six years old now. Um, I started out over-preparing when I first started. You know, like I had a journey that I was going to go down. Many of the people I talked to are academics or, you know, thinkers who write books. So they have a story to tell. Uh, you know, I could just say, okay, give me your lecture. And then a month, an hour later, stop, right? So the mistake is to sort of anticipate what the lecture would be and to ask the leading questions that would pull it out of them. Uh, what I do now is much more, here are the points, here are like the big questions that I'm interested in. And so I have a much sketchier um, outline to start and then try to make it more of a real conversation. Um, I'm helped by the fact that it is not my day job. So I, I strictly limit myself to one day of my life per podcast episode, on average. <laughs> Some days take more. And that includes not just doing the research, but inviting the guest, recording it, editing it, publishing it. So I need to be very, very efficient at that, yeah. You enforce constraints for yourself in which creativity can emerge. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and you know, look, sometimes if I'm interviewing a theoretical physicist, I can just go in. <laughs> and where inter interviewing an economist or a historian, I have to do a lot of work. Do you ever find yourself uh, getting lost in rabbit holes that serve no purpose except satisfying your own curiosity and then potentially expanding the range of things you know that can help your actual work and research and writing? Yes, um, on both counts. You know, I do, some people have so many things to talk about that you don't know where to start or finish, right? Others have a message. And it's what's, one thing I discovered over the course of these years is the correlation with age. Like there are brilliant people, and I try very hard on the podcast to sort of get all sorts of people, right? Different ages and things like that. Um, and bless their hearts, the most brilliant young people are not as practiced at wandering past their literal research, mm -hmm. right? They have less mastery over the field as a whole, much less how to talk about it. Whereas certain older people just like have their pat answers and that's kind of boring, right? Mm -hmm. So you want you want somewhere in between, you know, the ideal person who is is has a broad enough a scope that they can wander outside their specific papers they've written, but they're not overly practiced, so they're just giving you their canned answers. I feel like there's like a connection to the metaphor of entropy and complexity, as you said yeah. with the, there. Edge of chaos. <laughs> yeah. uh, you also do incredible AMAs, and people should sign up to your Patreon, and because you can get to ask questions, Sean Carroll. Well, for several hours, you just answer in fascinating ways, uh, some really interesting questions. Is there something you could say about the process of finding the answers to those? That's a great one. Again, it's, it's evolved over time. Um, yeah, so the Ask Me Anything um, episodes were first, when I started doing them, they were only for Patreon subscribers to both listen to and to ask the questions. But then I actually asked my Patreon subscribers would you like me to release them publicly? And they overwhelmingly voted yes. So I do that. So the Patreon supporters ask the questions. Everyone can listen. And also at some point, I, I really used to try to answer every question, but now there's just too many, so I have to pick. And that's fraught with peril. And my personal standard for picking questions to answer is what are the ones I think I have interesting answers to give for, right? So that both means if it's kind of the same old question about special relativity that I've gotten a hundred times before, I'm, I, I'm not gonna answer it because you can just Google that, it's easier. Um, there are some you know, very clear attempts to ask an interesting question uh, that honestly just I don't have an answer to. Like, I read this science fiction novel, what do you think about it? I'm like, well, I haven't read it, so I can't help you there. Um, what's your favorite color? You know, I could tell you what it is, but it, it's not that interesting. And um, so there's, I try to make it a mix. Uh, I try to like, it's not all physics questions, not all philosophy questions. I will talk about 
food or movies or politics or religion, if that's what people want to. I keep suggesting that people ask me for relationship advice, but they never do. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've heard. I don't think I've heard one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm willing to do it, but uh, I'm a little reluctant because I don't actually like giving advice. Um, yeah. But I do. But I'm happy to talk about those topics. I want to, you know, I want to give several hours of 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 talking, and I want to try to say things that I haven't said before and keep it interesting, keep it rolling. If you don't like this question, wait for the next one. What are some of the harder questions you've gotten? Do you remember? What what kinds of questions are difficult for you? Rarely, but occasionally, people will ask me a super insightful philosophy question. Like, I hadn't thought of it things in exactly that way. And I try to be, you know, um, I try to recognize that. Um, a lot of times is the... It, it's the opposite, where it's like, okay, you're clearly confused, and I'm going to try to <laughs> explain why how the question you should have asked. Oh, I love those, yeah, the, yeah, why that's the wrong question yeah. or that kind of stuff. Right. That's great, right? That's great. But the hard questions, I don't know. Like, I don't actually um, answer personal questions very much. Like, the most personal I will get are questions like, "What do you think of Baltimore?" Right? You know, that that much I can talk about. Or, "How are your cats doing?" Happy yeah. to talk about the cats yeah. in infinite detail. But you know, very personal questions I don't get into. But you even touch like uh, politics and stuff like this. Yeah, no, very happy to talk about politics. Um, you know, I try to be clear on you know what is professional expertise what is just me babbling what is my level of credence in different things where you're allowed to disagree whether if you disagree you're just wrong um and you know, people can disagree with that also but i do think you know and i'm i'm happy to go out on a limb a little bit i'm happy to say look i don't know but here's my guess right i just did a whole solo podcast which was exactly that and uh, you know it's interesting. Like some people, are like oh, this was great, and there's a whole bunch of people are like, why are you talking about this thing that you are not the world's expert in? So, you know, well, I love the actual dance between humility and having a strong opinion on stuff, which is a great. It's a, it's it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating dance to pull off. And I guess the way to do that is to just expand into all kinds of topics and play with ideas and then change your mind and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's it's interesting because when people react against you by saying you are being arrogant about this 99.999% of the time all they mean is i disagree yeah <laughs> that's all they really mean right yeah. um <laughs> yeah. you know like at a very basic level like people will accuse atheists of being arrogant and i'm like you think God exists and loves you and you're <laughs> telling me that i'm arrogant i think that all all of this is to say just advice. When you disagree with somebody, try to specify the substantive disagreement. Try not to psychologize them, mm -hmm. right? You know, trying to say, oh, you're saying this because of this. Maybe it's true. Maybe you're right. But if you had an actual response to what they were saying, that would be much more interesting. Yeah, I think, I wonder why it's difficult for people to say or to imply, I respect you, I like you, but I disagree on this. And here's why. I disagree. Like, I, I wonder why they they go to this place of like, well, you're an idiot or you're uh, yeah, uh, egotistical or you're um, confused or you're naive or you're, you know, all the kinds of words, as opposed to like, I respect you as a fellow human being exploring the world of mysteries all around us, and I disagree. I will complicate the question even more because there's some people I don't respect or like. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I once wrote a blog post, I think it was called The Grid of Disputation. And I, I had a two by two grid and it's, are you someone I agree with or disagree with? Are you someone who I respect or, or don't, right? And all four quadrants are very populated. And, and that, so what that means is there are people who I like uh, and I disagree with. And there are people who agree with me and I'm, I have no respect for it at all. The embarrassing allies quadrant. That was everyone's favorite. So, and I, I just think <laughs> being <great. laughs> honest, right? Like trying to be honest about where people are. But if you actually want to move a conversation forward, forget about whether you like or don't like somebody. Explain the disagreement. Explain the agreement. But you're, but you're absolutely right. I completely agree. Like as a society, we are not very good at disagreeing. We instantly go to the insults. Yeah, and I mean, I, even on a deeper level, I think at some deep level, I respect and love the humanity in the other person. 